Patricia, I understand that St. Teresa's Primary Health Care Clinic is part of the pastoral and social development programme began here by St. Patrick's Missionary Society in 1978. When did this primary health care centre begin to function? 1983, Father Stan Connolly invited us. So we came during the week and we didn't leave here until 84. So we didn't live here until 1984, but 1983 we came here to do immunisations and to teach health workers. Uh, you're saying we now, who is we? Um, Aisha Linan, a volunteer from County Clare and myself, with the help of Comfort here who organised us. What can get Comfort in on this? But she's a very important person around here. So Comfort has been with you here since the very beginning? Um, before. Before we were heard of, as they say. <laughs> and uh, where did the financial help come from to start all this, Patricia? Well, the Irish government and Troca gave funding for the clinic, and the shell of the clinic was put up in uh, 78 to save the land from being taken. And then it wasn't used, it was just a shell. It was after we came then that we collected funds locally, I mean, from philanthropists, big. Uh, business people around and then these groups, American women and international wives and British wives and Irish embassy, Irish wives. Very good. And is it self-supporting yet? Well, Missouri will pay some of the staff salaries and we got a grant from a Hackett Foundation in New York for our drugs last year and we paid all our drugs in foreign currency which we get in through CHAN, the Christian Health Organization of Nigeria. Uh, when you say drugs now, is it a huge supply of drugs or...? Yearly supply of the basic essential drugs. So you're on essential so, drugs? Yeah, we're on essential drugs, yeah. And uh, what is the average number of patients that are people that come here? I can't call them patients because they're not all sick, yeah. that visit here each day. When, like, can I start at the beginning? When we came here first, we just started immunisations and we were having even five to seven months a day. Then when we came to live, the patients were uh, came, coming in large numbers and we had to use half the size of the church to hold them and we couldn't let them move. So we were getting uh, excited about what was happening. So we went to Professor Ransom Kuti, who is now Federal Minister of Health, to ask him for help to see what we should do. So he came out and interviewed us and he had a few meetings with very interesting himself and Dr. Pearson and a few others. So they said we should do a survey and a head count. So we, they gave us help from Ruth, Lagos University Teaching Hospital and the demography group came out. And we had already trained many health workers. 12, 16 I think, 16, 16 in all. We had already trained 16 health workers. So every morning we had a meeting and they set off two by two with their notebook and they did street by street, house by house, road by road, house by house, room by room and did a head count. And that took us a couple of months and we made a target area for ourselves which is one kilometre by three quarters. I think our head count was 17,000 plus but that we also uh, have to include our church members which we already have registered. Something 20,000 had already registered inside six months. So could that be about 100,000 people that you are serving? Like I would say, yeah. Uh, now, what is the main thrust or focus of your your primary health care clinic here? Well, primary health care is prevention and education to big things, so the people can become self-reliant and learn how to look after themselves. My sister Lorena does the street work. And the mothers, when they bring their children for immunisation, like in other areas, some are very slow to continue, the, the, complete the immunisations. Do you have that problem here, like defaulters? Oh, I do do. We have defaulters from everything. But we have this EPI, Expanded Immunisation Programme, which is nationwide. And we're under the local government area here, whichever local government. We went under the mainland. 
So they supply all our vaccines now. So you don't have to pay for your vaccines? Not now. We did it for for the first couple of years. But now we're doing it free. So we do immunizations five days a week. So by doing immunizations you are already preventing measles, cough and cough, polio, tetanus and tuberculosis. And but there's a lot of tuberculosis and measles still. And you're talking about the dropouts or defaulters. What happens to those? Like you're here busy in the clinic all day. We have a follow-up, we give a brief follow-up, copy them. We have a follow-up in each cubicle, in each consulting cubicle, and we take the address. And then we have the community team. Sister Lorena heads the community team. She goes out on the streets and she's trying to form leader groups to look after the health. So she looks up the default. There's certainly and malnourished. There's certainly a lot of things happening here, Patricia. The follow-up cases. Going out to do the follow up. How does she know who to go to? Like you're looking at this book, what is, does it mean? These are special cases oh. that maybe they haven't enough money, the child is malnourished, and we feel maybe they have not enough money in the house, enough food. So she checks on their family to see if they need to come in and get free food because we're in the as well. So she writes in her note of the people she has seen. And we just give her the name of the street and the name of the child and the woman. And do you confine your services to the target area? When we try, it's and not why, easy. Why, what happens if you don't succeed? Like, how people come from Well, we here. We have a map and a list of streets that are in our area. Yeah. So we just we give them family referral cards. So each family in the area got a a family card. So if they have that family card in their hand, then they can be answered. But it causes a lot of confusion because the Muslims have more than one wife. So their family is very extensive. And you don't, you don't need to know whose wife it is or whose child it is. So thanks very much, Could we have I a think look around yeah. inside? Could you come to the nutrition? <laughs> Can you speak to us now about this little child, this little friend of yours? Well, this is her mother, and Cuevo is her name. And she has, uh, she's an active TV. Our husband is out of work for a long time, and we feed the whole family. She's four children alive, and she's on TV treatment, and she's four children have died of TV. He's smiling. And so she comes every morning to collect her tablets and she collects her food, yes. one bucket, she brings one bucket and gets food for the uh, five of them. This baby is not so well now, he's got some very, very thin. So why are you saying? his weight seems to be soft. Can you explain about this road to health chart to us? See, the two lines here are the road to health, and this is where the normal child comes up here. Now, this woman's child is well below the line because of malnutrition and probably TB. So you're trying to feed it so that it will drop up? Yeah, that it will come up into the line. So she's not doing very well, but she's been sick for a few days. You've been sick. Huh? You'd have to turn up the crowd now because you'd have to give them all attention. Don't spend too long on her now because there's a lot of information.
that's, they're cooking, this is the nutrition class, and they're teaching the people a cheap, balanced diet. The big pot has beans and yam in it. Now what's in the small pot? Fatimo. Fatimo. What's in the small pot? Beans. beans. They're mashing beans for the smaller babies, and the other one is for the bigger ones. Some of the children are here to teach the mothers how to eat off a spoon, to teach their children, and the others are, they're not giving them a balanced diet, you know, they don't give the children a balanced diet. Now, the pound everything, the onions and the tomatoes and everything, you're a bit late coming, and everything is ground. Tomatoes and onions and uh, any vegetables. What other vegetables have you? What other the food? Green leaf. Everything is uh, pounded in the mortar mortar. The is there. Now they have already cooked what we call pap. It's a corn. We call it corn. It's made from the ordinary corn. And it's for the very maize. Maybe people have heard it. It's for the very small children. And this is soup. What's in the soup? Fish. It's also ground. Fish and palm oil. And Crayfish, onion, tomato, and it's what they call ogolo. What's that? Soup. It's soup anyway, and it goes with this for the very small children that are learning how to eat. And then they would serve them out. Now here, this is a car, the road to health chart. So it depends on the type of uh, how malnourished the child is, which type of food they get, and uh, what diet they get, the age of the child. <laughs> so that they enter into the road to help, is it? This is the first year, and this child is under one year, and it's been weaned. So the mother hasn't enough breast milk, and she's not giving it enough to eat. So it will get this pap and uh, soup. So the yeah. pap and the soup is for the first, under the first year, yeah. where the baby stops breastfeeding, mm -hmm. and the mother has a problem in trying to know which is the best food to give it. This child is over a year, and he's this child is over a year and it has lost weight. Why would it lose weight, Patricia? Did well, it have measles? Maybe it's got measles there, but it's already lost weight before it had measles. And the mother wasn't giving it any better food. She was only giving it uh, corn and more soup. So measles can be a very big cause of malnutrition in this area, especially when the mothers don't know what kind of food to give the child to supplement the breastfeeding. Many of the people can't afford this food, so the food given out in this kitchen is relief food. Is that right? Yeah. We have a, we're organising a relief kitchen, which is, uh, at the moment, is just under, under uh, being organised. So, Fatimo is the person in charge of this section here, Patricia, is she? Fatimo lives locally. She's a local girl and she, woman, and she is uh, the one responsible for this nutrition kitchen. And every morning she comes in and she gets the women to help her to prepare the vegetables and the food that they will later give to their own children in these dishes here. That's all.